Beginning the journey of becoming an architect is exciting and challenging. It's a lifelong process of learning and understanding. Now, as a beginner architecture student, you're going to be exposed to a lot of new information and ideas, tons of it. You might find yourself confused by complex design concepts, struggling to communicate your ideas effectively, or just feeling generally overwhelmed by the history and theory of architecture or how things are built and go together. The right resources can make a big difference. So I've compiled a list of the top 10 10 books for beginner architecture students that I constantly recommend. These address these challenges and provide insights and guidance to help you succeed in your architectural studies and well into practice. I still constantly refer to these books on a regular basis. Now I've divided these books into five categories, general studies, communication, design, construction and history. The list is just a starting point to cover the basics in each of these areas. They're not in any priority order, they don't go into deep philosophical things theory. Most of these are more like reference books to refer to as required rather than something you would read cover to cover. A lot of them have been around for a long time, regularly re-released with revisions because they provide solid foundations and stand the test of time. Some people are going to disagree with me about this list. That's fine. We've all got our own opinions. The first book is 101 Things I Learned in Architecture School by Matthew Frederick. It's a little one, but a good one. It summarizes 101 key insights across all areas of architecture study and practice, including design principles, drawing, construction, communication, and professional practice. Why do I recommend it? It condenses complex architectural concepts into easily understandable steps and summaries. It provides valuable insights and reminders at all stages of your journey as a student and an early practitioner and super easy to read and flip through for inspiration. Second book is A Visual Dictionary of Architecture by Francis Ching. It offers an overview of architectural terminology and vocabulary from design, drawing and communications to building type and construction. It has an extensive coverage of architectural building examples and it serves as a really detailed summary of architectural elements, concepts and principles. It's full of simple definitions arranged alphabetically with insights into the historical, cultural and functional significance of architectural elements. It explores how different architectural features have evolved over time and how they're used in various architectural styles and traditions. Why do I recommend it? Because you can quickly refer to this book whenever you encounter some unfamiliar terminology for a quick and correct answer. It expands your vocabulary of architectural terms through visual examples and without having to kind of study and cram. And it allows you to explore related topics and terms beyond your area of interest. Just by flipping through it, you're going to gain more knowledge and understanding. The first two books sort of apply to general study and general architecture. Now we're moving to communications. The third book is Design Drawing or Architectural Graphics, both by Francis Ching. Now, I put these two books together because they're similar but a little bit different. So you might want to have a look at both of them and see what applies. Design Drawing is a bigger book and probably more appropriate for beginners. It covers general drawing for design, including architecture, and it's divided into three parts. Drawing from observations, which is basic elements and principles of general drawing, including line, shape, tone, texture, form, structure, space, and depth. Second part is drawing systems, which are more more formal drawing types used in architectural representation, including multi-view, power line, and perspective drawings. And the third part is drawing from imagination, which are additional types of architectural drawing, including diagrams, general composition, and presentation. So design drawing is a great start. It gives you a more of an overview. Architectural graphics covers similar information but not as much of it. It's more specific to architecture with less emphasis on general drawing techniques. It includes a summary of architectural drawing equipment which is quite useful so have a look at both and see which one appeals. Why do I recommend it? Because there's clear explanations and illustrations of different architectural drawing techniques that you can study and, and not copy but emulate. There's hundreds of drawings and examples to gain inspiration from without the need for long confusing text or explanations. You can see it in the drawings. And it's an ongoing reference reminder about good communication conventions at whatever stage of your drawing journey. Fourth book is Studio Craft and Technique for Architects by Miriam Delaney. So this is a book I only discovered recently when another tutor showed it to me and it's perfect for first year students who haven't done any drawing art or making of stuff before. Or for those of you who don't have a 
dedicated communication subject. So this book takes you through drawing and model making equipment, basic principles of representation, drawing techniques using drawing and models. It then includes practicalities of site survey, analysis and representation, and it finally moves into basic characteristics of construction materials and an introduction to construction systems. Why do I recommend it? It's super easy to use reference for the practical aspects of studio drawing and construction in design. It has step-by-step -step tutorials and detailed instructions for creating architectural drawings and representation. And it goes beyond the drawing and it helps you develop hands-on skills necessary for bringing your design. So that's communication. Let's move into design. Fifth book I recommend is Form, Space and Order by Francis Ching. It's the starting point for foundational design theory and it defines the basic elements and principles of architectural design that can be considered foundational building blocks in all design and it gives you a whole heap of strategies for organizing and relating things. It covers primary elements, the basic building blocks of point, line and plane that make up all three-dimensional architecture and design, then moves on to form, space and organization. So different compositions and ways of creating three-dimensional form and space and volume. Then it looks at circulation and strategies for moving through a building. It considers different systems and approaches to proportion and scale. And then it takes all these elements and it looks at different principles of ordering these elements of architecture. Now some schools of architecture don't necessarily emphasize design theory and pre prefer students to explore freely or different approaches to design. And I've come across some tutors and lecturers who just hate this book and I, and I don't understand why. Because so often I see students struggle to find clear strategies of spatial organization and the words to describe ideas or rationalize why you're making decisions and you're designing in a vacuum without a language. So if you regularly looked through this book with the intention of understanding the key elements and principles of architecture, you'd have a really thorough foundation and a ton of strategies to approach every design project just as a starting point, right? So why do I recommend it? Because it provides foundational elements and principles of architecture and design in basic terms. And it's all about creating, controlling form, volume and space, which is what we work with. It provides students with a design design vocabulary, conceptual thinking and strategies to begin to guide your design decisions. It has super clear illustrations and short explanations without complex and confusing theoretical text. And in my humble opinion, it provides a solid foundation and language for developing design theory and thinking. The sixth book is Neufert, Architects Data by Ernst and Peter Neufert, or the Metric Handbook Planning and Design Data by Taylor and Frank. Francis Limited. So these are two very similar books that are often referenced interchangeably and they're similar but different and one may be preferred over the other depending on your university or where you are in the world. One may be better for certain projects so keep them both in mind because they don't cover exactly the same things. But both books cover detailed planning and design for different types of architectural buildings, spaces and infrastructure. They have extensive drawings and diagrams outlining key functional dimensions and requirements for different conditions. In addition, Neufert explores infrastructure, construction and building elements in more detail which is possibly why it's referred to as a reference more often because it has more information in it. It has more stuff in it. Either way, if you can get a hold of Neufert Architects Data or the Metric Handbook, they're an invaluable reference that you can again flick through and refer to for every project throughout your entire career. Most offices will have one a hard copy hiding on a shelf somewhere so if you're working, go and hunt it down or ask them to go get one. Why do I recommend it? Because it's comprehensive planning and functional design data across a huge range of building typologies. It's perfect for prompting and understanding space planning in any project. It provides you with key sizes and relationships for preliminary and detailed design planning. So it gives you sizes of rooms and how big furniture should be and how high windows should be and how high benches should be, right? You don't have to reinvent the wheel, it's already done. You've got a basic functional layout as a starting point for any type of space you can imagine, leaving 
far more time for creativity and imagination rather than having to go and figure everything out. Seventh book is A Pattern Language by Christopher Alexander. So it could be said to build on the foundations created with form, space and order. It's, it's probably a little bit more advanced than those preliminary concepts and principles. It presents a collection of design patterns and principles that repeat in cities and create livable human-centered environments. It offers insights into the underlying structure of successful architectural design at three scales towns buildings and detailed construction so why do i recommend it because it's a collection of timeless design patterns and principles that exist everywhere and provide inspiration for high quality human centered environments it goes beyond just the functional and strategic organization organization of space and it considers social cultural atmospheric and environmental factors in design again it has simple explanations and accompanying diagrams to make it easy to understand and it's another one that you can just flick through and find what's relevant to whatever you're working on at the time. Let's move out of design and into construction. Eighth book is another one by Francis Ching, Building Construction Illustrated. It provides a comprehensive overview of building construction processes and techniques. It includes the fundamental systems of foundations, floors, walls, roof, doors and windows, as well as mechanical, electrical and other um, special details. It has really clear illustrations and detailed explanations that help you understand how basic buildings go together. So it's not fancy details, but here's why I recommend it. Again, like all Francis Ching book, it has clear illustrations and detailed explanations of construction principles. There's a comprehensive overview of construction processes and techniques, and it helps you understand how buildings are constructed from the ground all the way and the foundation all the way to the roof. Now let's move into history. So architectural history is a huge subject and there are hundreds or thousands of books available. So the two I've selected cover older, more ancient architecture and modern architecture architecture respectively and there are many other books that cover these two different contexts which you might reference instead for your studies but understand there's ancient history and then there's modern history so you want to be looking at the, the two of them because they're different. So there are many other books that cover these two different contexts which might be re referenced specifically in your study. If that's the case go with them right they've all got something to offer. These are just a start. They're two books that I'm familiar with and they're very broadly used in education. So these two books cover the generally taught and accepted architectural narrative, right? However, none of us were alive to confirm any of the history. So like anything subjective, I would encourage you over time to question these views and ideas, consider other perspectives and form your own ideas about architecture and architectural history. The ninth book is a big one, A History of Architecture, Settings and Rituals by Spiro Kostov and Greg Castillo. Um, so this provides a super comprehensive survey of architectural history, but it's not just about the buildings. It explores the cultural, social, and religious context in which buildings were created. So it's organized chronologically and considers architecture across a range of regions and across a range of eras. It goes beyond just describing the buildings to consider the context of broader society, culture, and politics. It's thought provoking and it brings up a lot of stuff for you to think about as a new student. So why do I recommend it? Well, it presents a connected narrative through the history of architecture rather than just a record of buildings and styles. It considers architectural history in the context of cultural, social, and religious contexts. And this one has a lot more text than some of the others, but it's history. There's also a ton of visual images and drawings and diagrams to accompany the narrative. As always, we like pretty pictures. The final book is Modern Architecture, A Critical History by Kenneth Frampton. So it examines the modernist movement in architecture, tracing its origins and evolution from the 19th century onwards. So this book explores ideologies and again, broader cultural, social and economic context in which modern architecture emerge. It goes beyond just a record of architectural styles and examples again, and it opens up the beginnings of broader topics for discussion and consideration. Why do I recommend it? Traces the origins, evolution and impact of modern architecture 
it provides one critical examination of the modernist movement in architecture and it provokes critical thinking, prompts students to begin to think about these social, cultural, economic and political contexts rather than existing in an isolated bubble and just looking at the building. So the top 10 beginner books listed here offer invaluable insights and guidance covering a broad range of topics. Whether you want to improve your communication skill, deepen your understanding of design principles or explore the rich history of architecture, these books are indispensable companions on your journey to becoming a successful and well-read architect. If this is the sort of thing you're interested in and you want more tips and resources, then make sure you hit like and subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you in the next episode.